Hey folks, I'm Nate, a technical marketing manager with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And today I'm going to walk you through how to use the Red Hat Insights Image Builder to define and build and even push to your cloud provider images for Red Hat Enterprise Linux to define your standard operating environment. In today's demo, we're going to push to Amazon Web Services, but you can find other videos on this same channel for information on how to push to Microsoft Azure and Google's Compute Engine. So check our other videos for how-tos on how to get those done. You're going to need a few things to get this done. First of all, you're going to need credentials on the Red Hat Hybrid Cloud Console. If you go to console.redhat.com, if you don't already have an account, you can go ahead and create one, but if you're already a customer, you've probably got one. The other thing you're going to need is your AWS account ID. If you log into your AWS Management Console, where it has your, the name of your account listed, if you click on that, beneath it you should see your account ID and there's a little copy button right next to it. So go ahead and grab those and then we're going to hop into the console here and I'm going to show you how to use Image Builder and then how to push it to AWS. All right, so here we are, we're at the Hybrid Cloud Console. Uh, I've already logged in. Obviously, if you haven't logged in yet, you're going to want to log in. Just go to console.redhat.com it's pretty straightforward from there. You, you've got this. Now, um, I'm at the home screen essentially for the Hybrid Cloud Console, so we're gonna wanna go to Image Builder. And to do that, we simply click on the menu up here at the top, Services, and you can make favorites. I have done no favorites because I wanna show you the actual uh, navigation here. From this menu, you wanna go to Inventories, doesn't sound quite as straightforward as you might think, but inventories, images, because we're going to an inventory of the images that we've defined. Now, that's relevant because these get saved, so you can recreate the images later, right? The images themselves don't get saved, but the definitions can be. So, you can see there's a bunch of images already in here for me. Uh, that's mainly because this is Red Hat as, as an organization. Some of these are my test builds, some of them are other employees, but uh, I'm going to start with a brand new image. We're going to click create image. Now, once I go to create an image, you can see we have to make some choices. The very first thing we're going to pick is what version of RHEL do we want to run? Now, we can pick RHEL 9, RHEL 8, or you can even, for development purposes, pick CentOS Stream 8 or 9. We're going to go with RHEL 9 because it's the latest, and why not? We're going to pick Amazon Web Services. As you can tell, you can pick lots of different options here. We can pick AWS, Google Cloud Platform, or Microsoft Azure, or we can pick a local version, a local copy, right? What this will do is it'll make an image that we can then download at the end. You can even output an ISO file that you can then put on like a USB stick or something, plug into a physical machine and build off of that. But like I said, we're going to pick AWS. Now let's hit next. Now, in order to share with our AWS account, we have to tell it where it's going to. Now, I mentioned in my intro, you have to go get this from your AWS account. It's actually really simple. You go to your AWS console, and up at the top there, where it has your name listed, you just click on that, and there's a little, uh, your account ID is right there. There's even a copy button. You click the copy button, and it comes out. So let me go over. I have my account ID saved in another window here. We're just going to go grab that. and we're gonna paste it in here. Okay, there's my account ID. It'll ask me what region I should use as the default. This is automatically populated, okay? Now we hit next. Now, do you wanna register your system with Red Hat after it's built? This is a question that's entirely up to you. Personally, I'm going to pick automatically register and I'm going to pick an activation key. Now there's a bunch of activation keys in here these are, you know, for various different uses. You may not have any listed. You'll want to go create an activation key in the customer portal before you do this if you want to register with an activation key. So we're just going to kick, we're just going to pick one of these. We're going to hit next. Now, partitioning. This is one of the powers of Image Builder. If you're deploying to a cloud provider, you could just go pick one of their built-in RHEL images, but you don't get the power to choose what you want your partition layout to be. Now, maybe that doesn't matter so much to you. Maybe it doesn't sound like such a big deal, but for certain reasons like compliance, you may want to define things like, oh, temp has to be separate, or home has to be separate, or var has to be separate. And this gives you the option to do that. So we're gonna go to manually configure partitions. And you can see that it starts us off with the root file system, 10 gigabytes. 
maybe that's fine. We're going to add some more. Let's make home its own partition. Make it five gigabytes. I don't know. Then we're going to add another one. We have to scroll down here, click add partition. Let's make temp maybe its own partition. I don't know. Two gigabytes sounds like a good size for temp. And let's add another one for maybe var. Okay, and let's make var another, I don't know, 10. All right, now obviously you can set all different options here. Maybe you want opt to be, to be its own partition. Maybe you want user lib to be its own partition. You can specify those right in here. Okay, now we're gonna hit next. And then we can pick what packages we wanna install in our, our system here. So the packages that we wanna install this is a pretty straightforward setup here, right? You type in the name of the package you wanna look for. Maybe we wanna add a command line editor. So let's look for Vim. Okay, now you can see here, we've got Vim common, Vim enhanced, Vim file system. These are all the different things that match the search term Vim. We're gonna do Vim minimal. We're gonna add that in here. Now, what if we wanted a whole group of packages in here? I don't know. Let's look for like Apache's HTTPD. We search for this and it's gonna have more than one hit. What if we want all of this installed? Maybe we don't want all this installed, but for the sake of example, if we click this double arrow, it's going to install everything that matched that hit. Everything that's in this list will end up in this list. Okay, now we can hit next, give our image a name. We'll just call it Nate AWS, hit next. And now it gives us a summary. Uh, we can look through the summary here and see what choices we made, right? If we want to, we can go back and make changes to these by clicking on one of these options over here on the left. But what we're gonna do now is click the create image button. And what this is gonna do is submit the image to the build queue, and then we can come back and take actions on the image later. Okay, so here we go. Nate AWS listed here, tells me it's rel nine. It's gonna to go to AWS, image build is pending. All right, so I'm gonna cut the video here. We're gonna come back in a few minutes once it's completed. All right, so now we have our images defined. We've submitted them to Image Builder. It puts them into the queue for, you know, the build process to actually occur. This takes anywhere from a couple of minutes to, well, maybe up to 10 minutes or so for these, these builds to complete. And then depending on which output we chose, it'll send it off to our cloud provider. Now, if we chose an option that gives us just a local image, you can then download the image at the end. Uh, but if you chose your cloud provider, it will do the, the process of automatically pushing it over to your cloud provider. And as I'll show you in just a minute, right in the, in the interface there for Image Builder, we can take an action on that image on our cloud provider, which is a pretty nice integration. All right, so here we are back at the list of images. My AWS uh, image has finished building. We're going to go ahead and we're going to launch it right on... AWS. So you can see right here in the list, there's just a launch button right here. Let's click that button. And we're going to go US East one. That's where we want to launch it at. That's the if you remember, that's the, the region we decided to build it in. You can move these around later if you want to, but that's by default where they go to. So we're going to launch it on US East one. This is this if you're not already logged into the AWS console, it's going to make you log in and then it'll bring it to this wizard. I'm already logged in. So here we go. All right, from this point on, it's pretty standard. This is how you would normally deploy any instance on AWS. We're gonna give our new instance a name. Just call it the new rel instance. Now, what disk images is going to use? Normally, this is where you would pick a disk image from the list of pre-populated operating systems that are available from AWS. In this case, you can see AMI from catalog is, our, is automatically selected, and it's got this composer ID, yada, yada, yada. This is the actual image that we just built from Image Builder. Instance type, T2 micro is fine for my purposes, but you're going to want to pick whatever is most viable for the application you're trying to deploy. Now, a key pair, obviously, this is just something that you've defined within AWS. I'm going to pick one of my existing key pairs what network and whatnot, again, these are up to you. You should have a network defined already within AWS. You're gonna to wanna to pick what network you want this image to be deployed within. 
And of course, you're going to want to tell it what security group or what firewall rules to apply to it. In my case, I'm just going to tell it to allow SSH traffic. Storage. Again, this is going to be up to you based on your needs. And we're going to go ahead and click Launch Instance. And what this is going to do is it's going to do just what it said. It's going to build a new instance on Amazon EC2. You can see here that it's initialized my instance. And now if I go to Instances, it should show up in my list. There it is, New Rail Instance. Now, obviously, this takes a little bit of time for it to actually deploy, but once it's deployed, you should be able to log into, the, log into your new instance, and you should see that all the customizations that you defined within Image Builder are right there and ready to go. All right, so there you have it. Uh, we've now created a, uh, an image using Red Hat Insights Image Builder. We've pushed it off to our cloud provider, and as you've seen in the demonstration here, we have lots of options for the output that we'd like that image to either be sent to or give us for download. The power of this tool is that you can take those images and run them on any platform, right? So you can push it to any of the big three cloud providers, or you can download them and run them on your own local environment. Or if you have a cloud provider where you want to build a custom image to send it out to, download that image, make your customizations, and send it up to your cloud provider. So this goes a long way into defining your standard operating environment so that you can you know, keep your standards across lots of different platforms. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.